Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Alana. And here on this channel, we talk about real girl shit. And as I said in my last video, it's because no one has time for fit guest bitches. <laughs> um, we also do, you know, some fun makeup here. I am a cruelty-free beauty, green beauty lover, skincare enthusiast. And every now and then I put out a gaming video because we do need some kind of escapism from this hellhole of a reality that we live in. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically the little opening spiel that I tried to do at the beginning this time. So hi, hello. I am wearing a cute face of makeup. This little orange fall, very soft and seasonal look that I am going to recreate for you guys today. I wore this today for the Canadian Thanksgiving. We're gonna get into all things holiday season and Thanksgiving in this video as well. But this is held up all day. I put this makeup on, I would say around two o'clock this afternoon, as per usual with me. <laughs> I'm filming this tonight at nine. So that's like a seven hour Day. I mean, I was just really sitting and, you know, hanging out in the house. My sister and I took some pictures, so this hasn't really been through the ringer per se. It's not like I went out to the store and like wore a mask, but it held up reasonably well. Obviously, I was eating and drinking, so the only thing I really touched up was just added some tinted lip balm, but otherwise I think... I think it did a good job of staying on my face and it's really pretty and... We've got some sparkle there. I never really do orange looks on my eyes, so I thought it was really fun. And I've got some cute little seasonal flowers in my hair. So yeah, let's switch to a bare face and we'll get right into this. Okay, we have a bare and blotchy face because that's what happens when I wash it. Don't mind this. <laughs> anxious itchiness causes good time rashes. But that's okay. As we talk, the skin will settle down and the concealer will obviously help. So, the star of today's show, which I'll just tell you right off the bat, is the Tati Palette, volume one of one. And since I've had this palette, I mean, I use it quite a bit. I really love all of the glitters. I just, I, I love sticking my fingers in this palette, even if I don't put any of the colors actually on my eyes. But today, because we were celebrating our kind of little family dinner thing, I wanted to do something a little bit festive and I wanted to try out an orange look. So everything, on my eyes today, we're going to go in with predominantly the Story Row, a little bit from Soothe, and then a little bit from Ritual. I actually predominantly stuck to the Sequin Row. If you've used the Tati palette, it's definitely not like a beginner palette because the shadows are extremely pigmented which isn't a bad thing, they're beautiful. Um, the, the quality of these eyeshadows is just absolutely gorgeous, but the um, the mattes are obviously a little bit more challenging, so the sequins just give you, I feel like, a little bit more play time. And I don't really love a hardcore metallic, like I'm either, the sequin is nice because it's just got that like kind of dispersed sparkle, which is my preference, which I think is why I've probably gotten the most use out of the sequin um, row in the glitter rose because I just like sparkle. I don't necessarily want like a full metallic eye. Anyways, that's not important. I just wanted to give you a look at the star of the show today. And then I'm just slowly gonna start going in with the face makeup. And you're gonna be really surprised because I actually did brows today. 
I don't know what possessed me, but I was like, it might be nice to actually have just a little bit of a bold brow, and I still have not waxed my eyebrows, so these, like, I, there is hair, like, almost, like, down to my, like, eye socket bone, <laughs> you know? I just haven't been feeling that kind of personal grooming, and today my mom goes, well, thank goodness you have bangs. And yeah, thank goodness indeed. So yeah, I just thought that I would maybe do a little bit more of a bolder brow instead of just this typical like soap brow or gelling them up into place. So I just grabbed out of my collection the Glossier Boy Brow in brown. And I feel like at this point in time, most of us are extremely familiar with Boy Brow. And I have been using this product for I would say six years now and it's definitely a tried and true. I kind of waffle between using the brown and using the blonde. Sometimes the brown just feels a little bit too bold. So if I use the blonde, it just kind of takes things down a notch, but you still get your brows filled in the way that you want with that the hold that boy brow has, which is quite nice. It does it does the job that we want it to, which is why it is still such a popular brow product. So, as I mentioned, the weekend that I'm filming this is the Canadian Thanksgiving long weekend. And obviously Thanksgiving in and of itself, especially after the year that we've had, and all of the things that have come to light for many people who were not necessarily aware. It's a problematic holiday. I personally didn't want to celebrate Thanksgiving. It just felt wrong to me because whether we want to admit it to ourselves or not, Thanksgiving in Canada and the US, regardless of when it's actually being celebrated, is a holiday that is purely built upon colonization and the genocide of indigenous peoples, right? Sorry, just get so into it. I'm going in with my concealer now, obviously not doing a full face of like foundation or anything. And today I am back to using my Emma Beauty Stay Woke concealer. And I really love her. And once again, my shade is T1 Honey Honey. So yeah, um, I, again, especially after this past year that we've had and, you know, the discovery of all of these unmarked graves and the spread of the knowledge regarding the atrocities of the residential schools reached kind of a wider public consciousness. It just feels more than ever completely inappropriate to be celebrating Thanksgiving and you know for my small little family the people who we celebrate with are you know my mom's <laughs> parents and my mom is Italian so and her and her parents are Italian immigrants so the Thanksgiving holiday is not necessarily important to them the way that it is to many, you know, white families, I think. But for us, it's very much an important time for family. And because of COVID and because of, you know, the extra care that we have been taking over the past 19 months now, we haven't really seen a lot of my grandparents and they're getting old. They're in their 90s. My nono turned 95 last month so you know the clock is kind of ticking unfortunately so the holidays are more about them than they are about anything else regardless of our my discomfort at this point i don't know if they would even have the mental capacity to understand the discomfort around celebrating a holiday like thanksgiving for them it's just they think of Thanksgiving, they think family time. They think seeing their grandchildren. So we complied and it's, we had lasagna. 
which was great. Thank you so much, Mom, for all of your hard work in the kitchen this weekend and the delicious lasagna that you made for us. And we had a beautiful salad with arugula from our garden. So it was, it was lovely. But what I also kind of want to talk about is that because we are now officially Oh my God, I keep talking. I'm just gonna dot this on my face and then I'll show you what this is. We are now officially into the holiday season. And you know, when you are looking out at the world through the lens of social media and that's your predominant mode of interaction as it is for many of us right now because we are still in a pandemic. This is the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush in toasted almond for my bronzer. What was I saying? Oh, so yeah, it's the beginning of the, officially the holiday season. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I love spooky season. I love Halloween. I love, I have always been a very festive person because I just love, I love family and I love to decorate. I love, the vibe and the aesthetic and the feeling of fall. I don't like the cold, but I do love the changing of the seasons. I love the way that the leaves change color. I love the vibrancy of fall. We live in Canada, we live in Ontario, so it is very, it's very beautiful. I love the way it smells. I love the scent of all of those leaves once they've fallen and they've hit the ground and everything kind of starts to decay. It's a very similar scent to you know the spring when the snow melts but this time you smell the snow coming you smell the cold months ahead and it's i don't know i, I love everything from the first leaf that falls to the first snowfall i love again family it's always been about family for us and we we've, we've always had a tiny family but it was has always been just a time of joy and togetherness but I want to take the opportunity this year because we're I'm in the same boat is that the start of the holiday season can be immensely painful for a lot of people and it took me a long time to really understand why when I was younger even you know five six years ago I had a hard time with people who were just like grinchy during the holiday season. I didn't understand why they didn't feel that same like spark of joy and playfulness that I did. Why I wasn't surrounded by people who loved just festivities and the energy that I, in the same way that I did. and. That's just my own naivete shining through and my own lack of certain experiences that naturally would color your perception of the holidays. And in the last, we're going on three years now, that did really strike home for me, unfortunately, because my own family went through a really intense tragedy of our own. So of course now the holidays are weird and painful and they will never feel the same and you're faced with kind of having to start your own traditions in a way that doesn't completely diminish the traditions that you used to have and the ways that you used to love the holiday season and it's all just very disorienting and you know, this year for our Thanksgiving, it was just my mom, me and my sister, and then my two very elderly grandparents. And when family members reach a certain age, there's this kind of realization, just to pause, I'm gonna start going in with the eyeshadow. I'm gonna go into Soothe in the sequin row. As I was saying, when your family members start to reach a certain age, there is this kind of underlying realization that you don't really know how much time you have left with those people. 
And, you know, do we celebrate this holiday regardless of how we may be individually feeling? Because it could be this person's last holiday. It could be this person's last... I don't know. It's... Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making any coherent sense? I'm not sure. I'm feeling a little disoriented myself because today was very challenging. This weekend was immensely challenging for us. We have in this family just, you know, a strange relationship. Um, our grandparents are a little challenging. I'm now going into Soothe in the mat row. You know, they're just old and a little bit difficult and you can't really fault them for that, but it's it's definitely hard. And my mom is, you know, my grandparents' primary, or one of my grandparents' primary caregivers. Her sister also assists with that, but it's just, it's difficult to see and it's difficult to kind of have those even just back of mind understandings and acknowledgements that you don't know how much time there is left. And then, you know, there's on the other hand, it's wonderful to be able to spend that time with your family. You know, we, we want to look at Thanksgiving now as time, and the whole holiday season as time to give thanks. And like, I am incredibly thankful and incredibly grateful for the family that I do have, especially my mother, because she is so strong, even when she shouldn't have to be. And she's so powerful and she is a huge part of the reason why I am the woman that I am. <laughs> You know, my sister and I just, we had a conversation earlier today and it's like, listen, we're going to giggle each other into, you know, our graves when the time comes. Like, we are going to be those two cuckoo old biddies, you know, in rocking chairs, just cackling on our front porch together, just laughing about all of our inside jokes that we've had for the last, you know, 90 years. I don't know, the, again, am I making any freaking sense? But we also, <laughs> suffered, like I said, this huge loss a couple of years ago, this we experienced a major tragedy. So our holidays are different. They feel different. There's a hole there. There's a loss there that we are still having to reconcile with these desires to feel festive and to start new traditions and to feel happy or joyful during this time of year. And all that is to say that if any of you are watching this and are feeling a similar struggle with the holidays, whether that is, you know, a personal ideological discomfort with upholding the status quo of some of these holidays, or whether that is because your family has experienced some kind of tragedy that, you know, happened around the holidays, or, you know, just traditionally your family never really celebrated, whatever, the discomfort or uncertainty or unsettledness might be, I just want you to know that I see you and I am sending love to you. And if you're watching this, I am immensely grateful for you. I'm so happy that you're here. And I just want, I really, really want it to sink in that none of us are alone. The holidays are hard, but none of us are alone, even in the those darkest moments, even in those, you know, sinking feelings in your tummy that it's all just bad, <laughs> which is something that I experience all of the time. We're, we're not alone. And it's okay if things are hard. It's okay if this time of year feels icky and wrong. It's okay if this time of year feels joyful and whimsical. It's okay if you have opposing days where one day it's not great and the other day it is. I'm sure that, you know, now that the holiday season has officially kicked off thanks to Canadian Thanksgiving in October, I'm going to have lots of those days. I'm going to have the, the highs and the lows. I'm also going to feel weird that it's incredibly warm in October still. And 
it should be cold and nippy and I should be in my turtleneck sweaters and you know of course I'm gonna have days where I miss my dad and where I'm you know days where I'm excessively worried about my mom taking care of my grandparents who may not be here for very long and then on the flip side I'm also gonna have days where I'm running around the streets dressed up like a witch taking pictures because I just want to play and I just want to <laughs> sink myself into the whimsy of the season. So that's that. I'm going to keep going with my eyes. I'm going in now with story, uh, the sequin row of the story column. I've just taken it on a flat brush. I've dabbed the brush into the pan on both sides. I'm just going to start patting that onto the edge of the lid and then move inwards. And I don't need this to go full saturation. I mean, again, these shadows are extremely pigmented. So I want the most color to deposit on the corners here. And then it's gonna have this natural, it's gonna create this natural little gradient because the shadow will not deposit as much here because I've already left it here. And then I'm just gonna kind of push that up higher into the crease and then I'm gonna go in with just a little bit more. And it's very pretty and you can go, you know, if you've got orange shadows, you could go a lot more vibrant. What I find really interesting is like it's so orange in the pan. Like it looks like a burnt orange, but then it hits my skin and it really starts to pull a little bit pink, which is okay. I think I'm gonna, once I add in some of the Soothe shades, you will start to see um, more of that orange tone that I'm looking for. So I'm just kind of dragging it out to give myself a little bit of a, a wing shape there and dragging the excess onto my lower lash line. And I'm gonna go in with just a little bit more and deepen up the lower lash line there and more on this outer corner. And it's really pretty. I really, really, really like this. Okay, so I've just wiped my brush off on the towel I have here and I'm just kind of blending a little bit more. Okay. And then I have I'm, I did a little bit more of a, a wing than I did with uh, than I did earlier today, but you get the gist. And then I'm just gonna take my fluffy brush here and just kind of blend more into the crease. And then I am going to dip into the sequin row of the ritual shade, which is this really gorgeous deep brown. And I'm using the same flat brush here. And I did the same thing. I just, I'm, I'm not filling the whole brush with the product, just the tip on both sides so that I can flip it over. And then I'm going to go in and deepen up the corner and pull the brown out into the wing that I drew. And I'm going slowly so that I don't deposit too much product. And then I'm putting it down on the lower lash line. And it's funny that when you add the brown, the orange starts to pop more. Is that just my eyes? I don't know, that's what I noticed. <laughs> Is what I was talking about making any sense to anybody? I think we're in still very much of a weird time. Mercury is still in retrograde, so you know I'm gonna keep blaming some of my communication issues on good old Mercury. And the fact that it feels like that planet goes into retrograde a hundred times a year. <laughs> but you know, troubles with communication is one of its calling cards. So it's not all my fault, guys. But I think as with everything that we have been through collectively over the past 18, 19 months, 
especially during the holiday season we really do just need to be gentle with ourselves and you know mitigate our expectations of ourselves and I'm sure a lot of us like me have that people pleasing tendency and personally speaking okay I'm going in with the metallic row in the story shade so it's this very gorgeous metallic orange that I've just put on the brush there I don't know if you can really tell um, and I'm just gonna go into on uh, the corner of the lower lash line and do the same thing on the upper lash line in the corner and just kind of use it a little bit like a liner I'm not going up here I'm just going across the lash line just for a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest pretty okay um what was I saying I don't remember <laughs> oh yes we need to be gentle with ourselves and we need to fight against our people pleasing natures if that's part of your issue like it is mine and what I was trying to say is that I have a tendency to just slap on a smile and be super cheery and be the one in the family that just like powers through and gets things done and just like takes care of business with a smile on my face and I'm very accommodating and that's all fine and dandy but it also takes a toll and so if you similarly have or share some of those behaviors, this is just a gentle, very gentle, very friendly, very filled with love reminder that you can take a tiny step back and prioritize your own well-being and your own mental state and take some of that care and attention and attentiveness and some of the, that honor that you would put towards that tradition and just try turning it inwards and give yourself that hug, make yourself a cup of tea, help your family if that's what you need to do, if that's what makes you happy, but also do something for you, especially if the holidays are difficult for you. Do something for yourself, do something that makes you happy, that doesn't, you know, push you into having to conform to the status quo. It's just about you in that moment. And that isn't selfish. That's self-care. Okay? Okay. I am going to put on some mascara because this eye is, you know, at a point where I'm happy with it. We're gonna go, we're gonna add a little bit more afterwards, but I wanna put the mascara on to give the full effect. This should come as no surprise. I am still using the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara, but I have also been going, after a couple of coats of this, I have been going in with the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean, which has been sitting in my collection since the summer. But I just really like the effect of the two of these together, especially if I do want a little bit more drama. The brush on the CoverGirl, similar to the like standard lash blast is just this like nice kind of chubby brush with those like silicone bristles so it just does a good job of like spreading everything out while depositing that like dramatic amount of product so I'm going to insert some kind of mascara intermission and I will see you in a second while I do the lash on this eye Okay, there is the right eye complete, and I think it is so pretty. I really love this look so much, and I'm honestly a little bit mad at myself for not having dipped more into story in the past, other than literally just doing like finger swatches, because again, I can't keep my hands out of this palette because it's just so pretty. But I've really only used the brown shades and the black shades. I've really shied away from the colors because I was like, I'm gonna look sick. But like, look at the difference between my two eyes. I mean, it my eye looks big and 
open and bright and the colors are incredibly complimentary. I really like that. Yay! What do you guys think? You're gonna have to let me know. I am going <laughs> to keep playing with this palette, I think. And I, as we, you know, get further along into spooky season, this was the extent of my, you know, festiveness, but perhaps next week we'll do like a big smoky black eye with the Tati palette. I think so, like very similar shape, but all dark smoky grunge. Love it. But this orange festive fall toned look is just beautiful. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna catch this eye up to speed and then I will see you back here in, well, for you a second, but for me, honestly, it's probably gonna be like 10 minutes because <sighs> that's just the way it's gonna be. And we're back with both eyes done. They're not exactly the same, but you know, forgive me, it's late. <laughs> Also, my eyes are never the same. It never ever works out that I have two perfectly even eyes, but it's close enough and I really, 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 really like it. So now that the mascara is on, it still kind of needs to dry. And I don't know how much you can tell, but I, maybe I'll zoom you in a little bit more. Oh. I focused the mascara kind of on the outer three quarters of my eye. So there's a lot more here. I barely touched the inner lashes with the mascara just to kind of help give that like wide but also elongated look. But while the mascara finishes kind of drying, I am going to go in with my blush, powder a little bit, do my lip and then finish the eye off with a little extra bit of sparkle. So because the eyes are, you know, significantly bold, I don't want to necessarily have anything on my cheeks that clashes with them. So I'm just gonna go in with my new Fabi Fave, the Tower 28 Beach Please Blush in Power Hour because it really is just that very nice kind of neutral toned kind of brownie blush. It's just great. I love it. Where's my blush? Just really having a good time. It's just such a good fall blush and that was a little bit much. Who's surprised? I always end up putting too much on my cheeks upon first application, but it's a cream blush so it really, your, your cheeks just kind of end up eating it anyways. And excuse my sniffling. I was in the garden today, so my allergies are going haywire, but isn't that such a beautiful color? I really love it so much. And then I'm just going to take any excess off of the tip of my nose. I am now just gonna go and powder real quick because my forehead looks like a searchlight. So does my nose. I'm just, I'm looking a little moist. And I am just using the same powder that I have been using consistently. It's the Bite Beauty Change Maker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder. And I am using the shade Medium 2. And I don't know, you can't tell, but there is a significant divot emerging finally since I've had this for like two and a half years two years. When did this even come out? I don't know. So just swirling and dusting, you know, as you would with a powder. Okay. Good enough. And if this were a normal day, I mean, you saw me when I came on camera and I was wearing this look, which I've been wearing all day. My natural oils do start coming through even if I powder. It's just really the initial kind of that I want to get rid of. Okay. Uh, again, similar to the blush, I kind of just want to keep it neutral. So earlier today and right now, I am using the Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jelly in Cashew. It still smells okay, so it hasn't caught off, which means I can actually use it to its fullest extent. But just a beautiful, neutral, nude, shiny lip. And then for the finishing, touches on the look. I'm gonna go back into 
the story row and I'm going to go straight to the top in the glitter and technically the glitters are not suitable for use around the eyes but whatever but I mean look at that it's gorgeous I'll just swatch it on my hand and I mean I don't go in with like that level of pigment I don't go that hard I literally just tap my finger in and then go to my eyelids and just go doop, 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 Like I kind of really like this just like messy scattered sparkle. And then, you know, take whatever's left and put it on your body. Cause it's not gonna get into your eyes if it's on your collarbone. I'm just gonna make myself so glittery. I'm probably gonna wake up tomorrow and the cat's gonna be <laughs> Anyways, that's my cute little, very soft, festive, fall, autumnal, aesthetic look. What do you guys think? What, what do you think? It matches my new hair. It matched the skirt I was wearing, but now I'm wearing track pants because I had a lot of lasagna. But as usual, there are cute photos on my Instagram if you're particularly curious about what I was wearing. <laughs> All right, so that is the look today, guys. That is the poorly articulated conversation. And I will just reiterate one more time for the record that the holidays are hard. Yes, we can love them. Yes, there are decorations and there's songs and there's vibes and there's all kinds of festivities. There's food, but then there's family and either the direct family or the lack thereof can make the season challenging and I never ever want to discount that again the way that I did in my naivete in my earlier years and if you are still experiencing the holiday season with the utmost joy just that's wonderful I would never wish anything else on you except for where, you know, specifically Thanksgiving comes into play because I really do believe strongly that we need to reframe the conversation around Thanksgiving across this entire continent and why we celebrate it and understand why we celebrate and maybe tie in the conversations of the history into our family gatherings where it's emotionally safe to do so. And perhaps alternatively, perhaps preferably change the traditions, perhaps make these specific holidays about harvest, about community, about giving back, about honoring the land, about acknowledging the land on which you live and who that land belongs to. Make it about being out in nature. Um, there's, there's all kinds of way that these holidays can be reframed to be healthier and I think make us collectively happier and, you know, ensure a different and hopefully brighter and better future. Once again, I have no idea if what I'm trying to articulate is coming across, but it is what it is. That's just how it's going today. And on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna go wash my hands. I'm gonna keep this makeup on my face for a little while longer just because I'm feeling cute. I might go dance around to some Justin Bieber and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether you're high or low, happy or sad, I once again just want you to know that from the bottom of my heart, you are not alone and I love you and 
We will be here together throughout the whole holiday season for all of it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the sad, the sparkly, <laughs> especially emphasis on the sparkly. Okay, shut up, Alana. That's enough for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked any part of this video, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up. And if you are one of my new folks that made it through this whole video, you know, do a girl a favor, join the land fam, and hit that subscribe button down below. All right, I will see you guys in the next one.